You know what? You know what? I want to bitch about this, because I can't. It's what I do. No, I don't want to be an asshole. Well, I mean, I do, but not, not in the sense that um, I'm going overboard being an asshole. I'm actually not being an asshole for once by being an asshole. So, just hear me out. I am really offended. Like, pissed off offended. That Monday Night Raw was fucking live tonight. Christmas fuck day. It was live. Now, you're telling me you couldn't tape a fucking show for today? You couldn't tape the, the shit? Because here's a newsflash, Vince. I'm going to let you in a little secret. Your product has sucked complete ass for over a decade. Your show is complete garbage. I don't even think there was even a really great show. I think you may have had one great show this whole year. The rest of the shows this year specifically have been straight up hot fire garbage. Okay? Your writing is complete shit. Your storytelling complete shit. Across the board... Across the fucking board has been straight garbage. Now, I don't mean to, you know, criticize that harshly, but it fucking sucks. And I think deep down inside, motherfucker, know it sucks. Okay. But they want to blame NFL and Monday Night Football and it's this, that, and basketball and this, that. Instead of actually having a product that's actually, oh, I don't know, worth watching, they want to be like, oh, here's some mediocre bullshit. Here, we'll vomit up some more mediocre bullshit and then blame basketball or football or whatever fuck ball is playing. That, oh, people would rather watch that. Well, yeah, you know why? You know why? Because it's compelling entertainment. Your whole show is about entertainment. This shit is not entertaining. Watching Rusev go from, well, Rusev in um, Aiden English having a fairly good showing at Night of Champions to, gee, let's put them in a fucking clown suit, in a Santa suit, and whatever other fucking kind of suit you want, and then you got the New Day dressed as what? What were what they dressed? Elves and reindeer, and that's going to be your little Christmas special. I, 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 what? What? And you think that's under fucking tainting? Watching grown men dressed up as fucking children. Really? Now, if there was a point to it, maybe. I don't know. But it's like, uh, yeah, how about you guys wear the Santa suit? It's like, there's no rhyme or reason for any of that. And I understand that. I get it. It's a cute little spot. And like, oh, okay. Listen, it's cute, but it doesn't play well. It's old. It's garbage. It, you've been doing it for decades. And it's the same shit. And it wasn't funny 20 years ago. Okay. Wasn't funny when Hacksaw came out 20 years ago with a 2x4 and a fucking Santa suit on. Going, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, Okay, that wasn't funny then. It ain't funny today. Okay. So you're telling me that putting this show on live did anything for this product at all. Because let's be honest, this product is garbage. This PC, or PGP, whatever the fuck you want to call it, era, fucking garbage. And what's sad is the motherfuckers don't care. Vince don't give a shit. I mean, back in the day, these motherfuckers were doing what? Five, six, almost eight on the ratings? Do you understand what that means? They're barely pulling in two, three now. Which means you've alienated a shitload of people. And for what? For what? Because if you think about it, Okay, logically, yes, let's not cater to the 17 to 34-year-old male demographic, so we won't have women with big boobies with their tits hanging out, okay, doing mud wrestling. Okay, fine. You want to evolve past that? Fine. We're not even talking that. We're not even going to talk about that. Okay, whatever. But the idea of you want to expand, okay, so you want the old people to be enjoying, you want the kids to enjoy, you want everybody in the middle to enjoy. Well, if you're expanding the audience, you should actually be expanding the demographic. You should be expanding the rating. Now think about it. You were doing the Attitude Era. 
You're doing some outlandish shit for survival of the company, for survival of the business, for survival, because you were going to go out of business. Okay. You did some outlandish shit, which was entertaining. You pushed the envelope. It was entertaining. Because you didn't know what the fuck these... these you, you As a viewer, I didn't know what the fuck you guys were going to do that from week to week to week to week. Okay. I had no idea. It was entertaining. I wanted to watch it. It's like when the NWO came out. First it was uh, Hall. And then, you know, Diesel. And then this one and that one and... Next thing you know, you got you got a million dollar man sitting in the audience holding up little little fingers saying there's gonna be a fourth member or a fifth member, whatever it was. And it's just you know then oh who's the third guy and then it's like oh my god oh it's Hogan holy shit. It was it was compelling entertainment. It was compelling entertainment. That's why they won for however many weeks it was, because they actually had product that people wanted to fucking see. Because you watch one product, you're like holy shit, what are they gonna do next? Oh, but let's tune in next week. I watch this garbage. I, literally, I could skip six months of this program, this product, and not miss a thing. You do realize that. I could actually go and not watch Raw. Like I could cancel Hulu. And and not even not even miss a thing. There's there's no reason, there's no compelling reasons for me to come back week to week. You say, well, why do you do? Because I'm a fucking loser. That's why. I can openly admit I'm a fucking loser. I am literally about one rainy fuck day from putting a gun in my mouth and ending it all. So that's your demographic who's watching this PG era bullshit. People who want to fucking commit suicide. 12 year olds and people who want to commit suicide in their 40s. That's who you got as your audience right now. Okay. Uh. <laughs> You know, so gee, let's not let's not put a let's not let's not tape the fucking show and let these, these these let the wrestlers be home with their families on Christmas Day. No, let's make it live because it's gonna make a special program. It's gonna be great. Are you fucking out of your head, Vince? Seriously, I'm I'm gonna no. Vince, you need to retire because you're fucked in the head. You are fucked in the head beyond recognition. Okay, now I'm sorry, and it pisses me off to say that because Vince has done some great stuff. I mean, the motherfucker created pay-per-view before there was even pay-per-view. First WrestleMania, pay-per-view. It literally was pay-per-view before pay-per-view. I mean, seriously, the stuff that he has done for the business, it's been pretty amazing. It really is. But when does it get to the point where he's hurting the business now? Because let's be honest, it was a point when his father, or refer to him as the old man, I use the term for a reason. There was a point when the old man reached the limit of what he could do because his vision was like, uh, okay, there was, a, there was a moment when his father's vision couldn't go any further because it had achieved everything it had to achieve. Now Vince comes along and is like, hey, you know what? Fuck the territories. We can, we can make this a global thing. Or even, you know, maybe not, maybe not global yet, but we could definitely make it, you know, Fuck, you know, like for example, fuck your territories. We can make this, you know, all over the country. And then eventually globally. And he did. He made it a global fucking product. Now, if his old man was still in charge, they'd, you know, be hunkered down in a little area. Still doing the same shit. Crockets and sprockets and spacely sprockets and all of them. We'll still be rolling around. Like the fucking Barnum Bailey Ringling Circus and shit. Okay, it comes to town every month. Okay, that's basically what it would be. So yeah, I mean, the guy was a visionary. He he took the the product where it was and said we can go better. And I I respect that. But now it's getting to the point where he's now the old man. His product is stuck in like circa 1989 Saturday morning superstar bullshit mentality. And I'm sorry, it's hurting the product. Because this product has not been engaging for a long, long time. I mean, seriously. Now, as, as a wrestling fan, I will say that it's kind of a, I have a mixed feeling because Hogan can't wrestle. He couldn't wrestle. He was a shitty wrestler. But he's the most iconic wrestler. Why? Because he could tell the story. He was entertaining. He didn't do all the moves. He didn't. He had like three moves. One was a leg drop. The other was hulking up, and the other was putting his hand to his ear, going, "Huh? 
Okay, that was Hogan. That was his, that was his three moves. And then we moved to Cena, who had five moves of Doom. Okay. Now we got Reigns, who I think has like seven. Now, now I admit, if you go from top guy to top guy, they have progressively gotten better. Although I would say that Hogan is still a better performer, simply because he's more entertaining. He has more of a presence. When you look at Reigns, yeah, he's got a few more moves, but he's he's like an old shoe. He's boring as fuck. So, it, uh, I don't know. I don't know. So whoever the next guy is after Reigns shows up, is either going to be dull as fuck but have really great move set, or is going to be really fun and have a dull ass move set. I, I I don't know. I have no clue. I have no idea what, what's going to happen. But this product needs a fucking change. This product needs a kick right in the fucking dick. The whole product needs a kick in the dick. The idea that their developmental show, NXT, is far superior than the two main brands. Like, every time you see... Because, I, listen, I understand. I get this. I, I understand the idea for the NXT roster. is like, oh, wow, I finally get called up to the main show. To me, that's like a death knell. It's, it's a complete death knell. Now, I'm going to let you know a little secret. The four horsewomen in NXT, I don't think any of them have had great matches since they moved up. And they've been for, here for, what, a year? More in, in some cases? Year and a half? Two years? Whatever it is? But I don't give a fuck who it is. I don't care if it's Charlotte or, or, or Sasha. They have not had the same type of quality matches that they were having in NXT. There's, there's like... It, it's not even necessarily them. It's the whole product as a whole. There's no passion behind what they're doing. It's just... Let's do generic mundane bullshit just to get, you know, just to get the product out. Where NXT was like, you actually could feel in the ring that these two had passion for what they were doing. You look at them now, it's like, there's no passion there. And it's not, again, it's not even them. It's everything is so fucking scripted. Like you, hear, you keep hearing about, oh, reach for the brass ring. How do you reach from a brass ring when everybody's reading off a fucking script? And it's boring and stupid. Now I'm sorry, watching Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon, oh, hey Shane. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Shane. <laughs> that is boring as fuck. You want to know the guy's honest truth? Now, I don't know. Maybe it was scripted. Maybe maybe every single solitary moment is scripted. But the way it sounded, it wasn't. The two best promos that I have heard in the last two years was The Miz on Talking Smack, when it was more realistic, and just recently, Mojo Fuck Raleigh, who I, nobody gives a shit about at all. I, even Mojo's like, hey, I don't give a fuck about myself. I suck. Okay, he gave one hell of a fucking promo. And it was like like on YouTube or some shit. It was on his own little personal channel or some fucking thing. Whatever the hell it was. Where is that kind of passion? And again, it's not the wrestlers. It's the whole product. It's the whole thing. It sucks the passion out of what they're doing I mean, you got a fucking kid. Now I understand. I listen. You can't rock the boat, but you got a poor kid like Tyler Breeze, who's actually talented. Fuck his gimmick. Who cares about if if Vince likes his gimmick or not? The kid has legit talent. Okay, go back to NXT where where he Neville and uh, Tyson Kidd were going for the NXT title. Tyler Breeze should have won that fucking one match. He did some amazing shit. The three of them together did some amazing shit. I mean, just pure fucking gold what they were up to. And then he gets called up to the main roster. And it's like... And they do nothing with him. In fact, the kid don't even wrestle anymore. And I understand he can't rock the boat. But now he's going on, on you know, people are like, people are going on Twitter saying, hey, you know, I wish you, you know, wish we could watch you wrestle and, you know, wish you could actually perform and actually do stuff. And he's, he's coming on saying, well, you know, I'm buying my third house and blah, 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 blah. The idea that you, you made the kid settle for mediocrity bullshit instead of doing what he wants to do, which apparently is wrestle and not just sit there and collect money, which, hey, guess what? More power to him, you know? <clears throat> Yeah, uh, yeah, I take that too. Just sit around, seriously, sit around and catering, suck dick and, and do whatever you do back there, you know. Eat some fucking pancakes, whatever the fuck it is you do, you do in the back. Maybe pose for Vince a little bit, get them all hot and heavy, you know, and make twenty million or whatever it is you're fucking making. Uh, not to make it that much, but you know what I mean. 
you know, hey, I get it. I get it. It's still mediocre bullshit at the end of the day. See, I'm sick and tired. This generation specifically, these young kids today, whether it's it's Halo, Call of Duty, gaming, WWE, football, basketball, they are so determined to defend mediocrity at every twist and turn. Nobody has passion for what they do. Nobody gives a fuck about what they do. It's like, hey, am I collecting a paycheck? That's all I care about. Now, I'm sorry, you look at some of the, the people, some of the, some of the people in NXT, they get in the ring, there's some fucking passion there. Now, you get like somebody like Sasha Banks, who I actually believe, beyond a shadow of a doubt, loves what she does. Absolutely believe that. But the whole surrounding of Raw and SmackDown, it just sucks that vibe out of the ring. I mean, seriously, when you watch them now on the main roster, you could have literally Charlotte versus uh, Sasha. And there's nothing. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. It's scripted. It's just straight bullshit. There, I mean, there's nothing there. I mean, there's literally nothing there. I mean, you could literally put two sock puppets in the ring and just, just literally. I mean, seriously, have Mick fucking fully come out, take his socks off, stick it in the ring. It, it's, it's more entertaining than this. And again, it is not them. It's not that they're performing less or, or don't have the passion or you know. It's not that. It's the whole setup. It's the whole thing. There's like no meaning behind it. It's like, uh, yeah, you versus you tonight. There's like no reason for it. There's no build up for half of this shit. There's been multiple pay per views in the last two or three months where there's been zero build. It's like, uh, yeah, let's put you on the card and uh, how about you? No reason. Now, you've got to build that fucking story. You've got to build what's going on. I mean, was, I think it was a SummerSlam. There was like hardly any fucking build for it, or whatever it was. Maybe not SummerSlam. It was, uh... I can't remember. But it was in the last, like, three four months. There was an entire pay-per-view where there was, like, no build. They had a week of build. The rest of it was just straight garbage leading up to it. And then... No reason. And then, oh, let's have a pay-per-view. Because it's scheduled. It's been, and that, that whole putrid fuckery just, just, just permeates the whole product. Like, to the point you look at it and, like, you're watching... Like, I'm looking at the TV and, like, my nose is wrinkling up because it stinks so bad. Like, I can smell it. I can smell it from, like, miles away. It's putrid shit. Okay. So, if your product is really this bad, and you have no desire to give a fuck. It's like, oh, attendance is down, house attendance is down, but... Mm -hmm. Okay, you can make 101 excuses for 101 donations, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Your product is still garbage at the end of the day. Now, I don't know how Vince can watch some of this stuff and be like, oh, well, they did great. <laughs> I don't understand that. This is great propelling TV, guys. I don't understand how he can watch that shit and say that. I really generally fucking don't. And I, I know I'm not the only one. I want this product to be good. But it's like, it, it, they don't even try. The, I mean, not, again, not the wrestlers, because my beef is hardly ever with the wrestlers. Occasionally you'll see some who kind of do lose it. Like, there was a time when Am uh, Ambrose specifically just was kind of like going through the motions and was like, eh. But then he kind of got re reinvigorated. Um, you know, there's a couple guys once in a while, like Orton, every, every once in a while gets into that, where it's like, you, you clearly see in the ring they do need some time off, because it's just, you know, they're just going through the motions. And, and that's what the whole thing is. You go through the fucking motions. You come out, you do your pose, you do this, you do that, you do your finisher, you know. And I understand it, because that's the point, because the fans come, they want to see that, they want to see you do your five moves of doom, or whatever the fuck it is, and... You know, it's like you do the same thing over and over and over and over and over. You know, I, I get it. The repetitive nature of the business, I get it. They got to do house shows, and it's like you got to stand up on the rope and do your little pose. Or, you know, the music's playing. It's just, listen, I get it. I understand that. But there's no, you can take that and have it have meaning and have it have some sort of passion behind it. 
where, again, you can't fault the wrestlers for a shitty work environment. And that's what Raw and SmackDown really do create. And you can't tell me that everyone on that roster is happy as fuck. You can't tell me that. I mean, these guys look more happy when they're sitting in the back on uh, up, up, down, down, playing video games with each other. Okay, they're they're having more fun doing that than actually just, you know, being there. It's 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 sad. It's actually legitimately sad that you're forcing these people to do this instead of letting them have some creativity, letting them maybe do a promo or two. Now granted they can cut a promo and maybe you could edit it later. You know, under the circumstances. Now, obviously some of it's live. I get that. But, like, give these people talking points. Don't have them just sit there and read shit. That is boring as fuck. And again, how are they supposed to reach for that famed brass ring when they have to read off a fucking script? I mean, honestly. No, seriously. You, you, look, at guys, look at people like Bailey. No. She literally is like Macho Man and John Cena had, had a butt baby, and that's her. So that's basically her. She, she's she, maybe throw a little, little macho man in there too. And and that's the type of character that you have. And she moves up to the main. She was doing amazing stuff in NXT. They all were. Move up to the main roster, and it's like crickets, nothing, nothing. And it's not even the fault of her it's the fact that they have conditioned the fan base to just accept mediocrity now you look at something like NXT where you actually have to pay for it you actually have to give a damn as a fan they put out products that's actually decent which I'll be honest with you it's almost night and day the fact that NXT is actually a WWE product it, it just it feels like a whole different company it does. They tell storylines that fucking matter. They actually put over... No, I'm sorry. You, you got you got somebody like the Velveteen Dream who comes out and acts like a, a transvestite. And he's doing that kind of stuff. And just wiggling and touching his chest. And he's got this, this cropped uh, midriff thing with a little a little tie up front. And he's got the front... You know, and he's got the little glasses. And he, you know, doing all that weird fucking creepy shit. Almost like gold dust back in the day. They turned his character into something that was fucking phenomenal. That last NXT TakeOver with Aleister Black was a fucking amazing match. I would actually say it was probably match of the year. I mean, he comes out, he's dressed like, like uh, a cross between HBK and uh, Rick Rude, which completely sold me. And they built up this story, and it was such a simple story. He wanted recognition. That's it. He's like, say my name. And the guy wouldn't even look at him. And they built that up for weeks. And it was perfect. It was the single greatest story WWE has ever told, ever. Okay? And it was simple. It was just simple. You look at the storytelling. I'll be honest with you. I don't even know what any of the storytelling is on Raw. I think you got Braun Strowman and Kane, which is monster versus monster, which is just stupid. And the only reason that that's going on is because there's nothing else for Braun Strowman to do up until, like, the last pay-per-view. And it's just giving him something to do, basically. Yeah, I mean, seriously, what are some of the other storylines? Um, now, there's, there's uh, the Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan storyline, which is good. And that's probably the only good one over there. Ziggler's got a little bit of a storyline now where it's like, you know, what's going on with him? Eh. But nothing to write home about. And that's about it. I couldn't tell you a single solitary storyline. None. There's no storyline there. None. Nothing keeps me engaged to the point where I give a fuck. I mean, seriously. What, what, why do you, why do you think I'm going to come back to this product? Other than the sheer desperation of my existence as being worthless. And I have nothing to do for five hours a week. And I watch your fucking product. I mean, 
Now, that speaks more to me as being a pathetic human being than it does to say, well, you know, we're offering a service to you because you suck at life so bad that we're going to, you know, let you escape reality for five hours a week. Or, well, actually, it'd be six hours if you count NXT. So six hours a week, we let you escape reality. And we're doing you a service. You know, I could almost look at it that way. But the simple fact is that I get depressed watching some of this shit. Because, I'm sorry, it's like, there's there's certain people, like, you want to see them. You want to see them perform. And some of these guys, they're not performing. They're, they're sitting in the back doing nothing. They're doing nothing in the back. Nothing at all. And it's the same shit. Oh, we gotta dust off Cena because we need, you know, ratings. Well, whose fault is that? Whose fault is it that you have no one else to take his place? I have been saying that for a better part of a decade now. For at least eight years. Because, well, shit, there was a couple years ago, what was it? Uh, it's right around Christmas time when Cena got hurt. It was a few years ago. And it was, like, nobody... Nothing was going on. Like that WrestleMania was just this hobnob card because like everybody kept getting hurt, and they had to hobnob the fucker together. I almost think it was WrestleMania 30, 31 or twenty nine, somewhere in there. And it was like the single worst card, and it was just because everybody got hurt. Well, guess what? You should be able to take Cena out of the equation and still have something going. Oh, Reigns, okay. Well, what if Reigns gets hurt? What do you have? Right now, if Reigns gets hurt and Cena's not there, what do you have? You have nothing. You have nobody. You build it around one fucking guy who people either love or hate. Why not build it around a lot of people? I mean, I remember back in the day you had you had Stone Cold. Stone Cold got hurt. You had The Rock. Rock got hurt, you had Triple H. Triple H, you had Shawn Michaels. So on and so forth. Like, the top seven guys were, like, all Hall of Famers and great and wonderful and just... Like, I mean, seriously, when... Like, your eighth and ninth guy are, like, Ric Flair and Mick Foley, that's not bad. <laughs> okay. Now, they have... I would even argue they may even have a slightly better roster than that. If they use these motherfuckers in a proper way, and they just simply don't. But again, no, no. Cena, like I say, Cena's not, not around much anymore. You know, he's not going to be around it forever. Reigns isn't going to be around forever. Now what do you got? What what do you have? You have the Fashion Files. Okay, so yeah, that'll take up five minutes every fucking show. Fashion Files, yeah. Woo! Woo! Here, here we are, Flair. Woo! I mean, seriously. That's what you got right there. You get a Ric Flair come on and go, whoo, that's more fucking entertaining than this shit. <clears throat> Anyways, back to my point. Back to my original point. Fuck you, Vince. Fuck you, Vince. You need to retire. The fact that you had these people work on a fucking Christmas day. No, I'm sorry. You're, 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 whatever the fuck it is for the troops uh, episode should have aired tonight. It should have aired on USA Network, tonight. This is when you do that. You you televise it a week or two ago. You send everybody over to Afghanistan, where the fuck they are. Ten buck fuck two. You record that fucking shit, and you play it for tonight. You play it for tonight. You don't have them work on a Christmas fuck day. Actually, I'm surprised. I'm surprised they actually have people there. I mean, for one night of the week, you motherfuckers, you could give them the night off. I'll let them be with their families. That, to me, just sucks. That is just straight fucking bullshit. And it's not like it does the product any good. That's the thing. If they were like, okay, we're going to do a really amazing program tonight. Like, pay-per-view quality, it's Christmas Day, let's do an amazing fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> really? From what I'm hearing, because I don't I watch it on Hulu the next day, 
Apparently there was a boring chant that rang out halfway through it. Cena comes out, completely ruins the fucking show. And apparently people were bored as fuck with this program. So now you've taken them away from their families, made them work Christmas Day, and produced a bullshit, worthless, fucking throwaway week. Again, another throwaway show. That has no build to anything, it does nothing... It engages nothing. And for what? And for what? What purpose was a live show on Christmas Day supposed to achieve? Uh, I, and I don't even think Vince has a fucking clue what it achieved. He knows it didn't achieve anything. It achieved nothing. And you couldn't even, he can't even brag about, well, you know, hey, it's, it's, it's not taped anymore, you know. It's a live show. It's fucking Christmas. We, people expect this shit to be taped, you know. Give me a break. I mean, maybe maybe some of these fucking people who are leaving and are sick and tired of the fucking product and want to go work elsewhere, maybe this is part of the problem. Give them the fucking day off. I'm sorry, I expect them to have the day off. I don't expect, oh, it, well, it's, it's Christmas Day and it's a Monday. Raw's got to be live. And again, again, I will continuously ask this question. What good does it do? What good did it do? Was this the most amazing program that you've ever produced in WWE? Uh, I, can, I can tell you guaranteed, bottom line, absolutely not. Not even remotely close. I mean, I could come up with fan fiction within like three minutes that's far better produced bullshit than, than we've seen the entire year. I could book that shit. Thousands of other fans could book that shit because it's logical. There's logical booking in what a lot of people are wondering why the fuck isn't happening. You look at what they do on the actual program, there's no logic there. It's just, uh, yeah, you're going you're gonna to wrestle in this one, and you're going to do this. And, oh, we want to get everybody on the card, so let's have you know, tag team matches up the wazoo. And, and, and triple threats, and, and five ways, and fuck ways, and all this other bullshit. Just so we can get everybody on the card. Okay, fine. I get that. Actually, you know what I wish they would do? Like, especially WrestleMania. They need to make WrestleMania a three-day weekend. Literally a three-day weekend. Not just, oh, let's have WrestleMania for 18 hours on Sunday. No. 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 I would have WrestleMania start off on Friday. <clears throat> you have your NXT event. And then on Saturday, I do SmackDown event. A SmackDown version. And then Sunday, I would do your uh, Raw. Well, you know, there could be a little carry over here or there. Like, you could have a couple Raw matches that are kind of blah on the Saturday, and a couple SmackDown is kind of blah on the Sunday. So there's a little bit of a, a mesh of those two specifically. Because it's sitting there for 18 fucking hours, because we want to get as many people on the card as possible. Listen, I understand it. I get it's WrestleMania. You want to get as many people on. I understand that. But just sitting there for 15 fucking hours. Pre-game, post-game, this game, that game. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, seriously, it's over fuck kill. Over fuck kill. And then you got the the, the awards, the, the Hall of Fame ceremony, then you got NXT. It's just it it's too freaking much. And I would I would then throw an uh, I would take NXT Friday, SmackDown Saturday, and Raw Sunday, and then throw either Friday or Saturday, depending on, you know, availability. Um throw the ceremony in there. Like, you could do the ceremony on Friday. And then, you know, I would I would expand it for a three, whole three-day weekend. Because that would be kind of fun. You got NXT in the, in the Hall of Fame on Friday. Saturday could be like this big media event with, you know, more stuff, matches going on, and, and WrestleMania matches, and then actually have the actual show. I mean... 
or something to that effect, or do like a, a little thing. So, it, you know, that way you can get some of the lesser card in there instead of having stupid shit like, uh, <coughs> like Big Kaz versus Big Show shit. And don't get me wrong, nothing against those guys, but that, that should have been like a pregame show. Just simply, it should have been. Not part of the 18 hour extravaganza bullshit, okay? You know. It's just, seriously, you can only watch so much of that stuff in a day. I don't care if you're the biggest diehard fan. You, like I said, you can only watch so much of that a day. And then, no. <laughs> no. You gotta, you gotta draw that shit the fuck out. So, I don't know. And plus, it would give you something to do on a Saturday. You know, it'd be kind of nice. And you got, like I said, you got the Friday, the Saturday, the Sunday. Or something. Now, I would definitely keep the Sunday. You definitely have more of the mixed, like, stuff. But you could actually have such a stacked card on Sunday. Actually, hell, you could even, you could even kind of intermingle all that stuff. Where you have maybe even... I don't know, there's, there's things you could do. Like, you could even intermingle the NXT stuff in there. Like, save the main events of NXT, SmackDown, and Raw, and put all that on, like, the Sunday. Have the mid-card stuff, you know, Saturday, you know, all all through Friday and Saturday. I don't know, you could do stuff like that. You could mix it up a little bit, maybe. I don't know. Just a thought. I don't know how well that would work. It might It might be a complete logistical mess. I don't know. But... The only problem is it it would come across as anything that's not on Sunday is kind of like eh. But I don't know, man. You look at the NXT stuff, and the NXT stuff isn't eh. You know, in fact, the NXT stuff is actually more entertaining than the main show shit, and it's a fact. Like you look at the last Takeover NXT Takeover pay per view, it still was better than the main roster stuff. It absolutely was. War Games was far better than the rest of the crap. And it's just... I don't know. I I, I don't know. But again, like, I'll ask, what, what good did running a, a fucking live program on Christmas Day achieve? What did it achieve? It achieved nothing. Absolutely nothing. Except for burning out the, the wrestlers. That's all I did. It burnt them the fuck out. I guarantee you this. The product isn't better for it. The company isn't better for it. The talent isn't better for it. And the fan base isn't better for it. Because again, who the hell wants to watch this shit Christmas Day? You know? Who wants to sit there and watch medi- a mediocre Raw on Christmas Day? Now, again, you want to put on a decent show and put on, like, a, like, legitimate television show. Okay, fine, that's one thing. But you know damn well they didn't put on a legitimate television show. They did bare-bones minimum bullshit. And you know, you know every one of them didn't want to be there. And quite frankly, I didn't want them to be there. And nor did anybody else. I don't think there's anybody with active brain cells like, Yeah, I want you to work on Christmas Day. I want you to entertain me. Give me a break. Most people are in a fucking ham coma right now anyway, so they're not even watching the program. I just, I don't know. It just bugs me. It just... Uh, anyways, you know what? That's some rant. I don't give a fuck. It just... <laughs> anyways, you know what? Fuck you. Like, subscribe, favorite, or go fuck yourself. Assholes. Fuck you, Vince. Fuck you, Vince. Fuck you and the horse you rode in on, Vince. <laughs>